Buongiorno e benvenuti. Welcome to Art Yoga Pills with me, your host, Dinni. In this space we will connect and share together about creativity, inner child and self-awareness. Siete pronti? Enjoy! Ciao a tutti, chi è ora? And welcome to a new episode of Art Yoga Pills. I have with me a special guest, Aaron Burgess. How are you today, Aaron? Uh, I'm doing really well. Thank you. So I'm giving you some time. I noticed that you are taking a sip of water, um, but I can briefly share that my connection with, uh, with you is due to some common friends. And this led me to discover a little bit of who you are. And um, I guess that the way that I know you is just the tip of the iceberg of what we're going to explore today together. So I'm curious actually to begin our conversation by asking you, who is Aaron? And you can go either professionally or personally, whatever suits you today. Who is Aaron? Um, <clears throat> I guess that's, I find that's, that's an interesting question that because um, I think I can kind of break it down into who is Aaron today? Who is Aaron on Monday morning? Who is Aaron Saturday at 3 a.m.? Who is Aaron on, you know, it's, I think, um, I probably don't really have a, like a one word answer because I guess I, I put on different hats at different times um, and I like to, I like to explore, um, yeah, different interests and different things. Um, so almost I have two different personas as well. But I guess um, if, I, if I was to simplify it, I think of myself as someone who is uh, curious, um, curious to learn, curious to know how things work. And that's you know leads me into kind of creative areas um i have a balance of my mind being kind of quite structured but then also quite loose at the same time so um <clears throat> i go through i guess my personality also has elements of perfectionism um but then yeah i like a lot of different things like i like um I like creative things but i like music uh music is one of the areas where we're connected um and i think often when i'm when i'm doing work or when i'm doing art or photography or being around music i think there's a balance of either being in my head or being in my body my heart and so I think some of the time I, I need to make sure that I do things that allow me to move away from my mind and just into my um, into my body. Um, that's, I guess, like an area where I feel free. Wow, what a beautiful way to describe yourself. Like, I really, I really like it, especially the part where you were mentioning about wearing different hats at different time, which is something that I will keep aside because I have some question related to that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe um, starting with what I know about you um, and see how our conversation can, um, can grow from there is uh, mm, one of the main things that I know about you is that you are passionate about photography. So I wonder if you could share with us something related with that. Um, if this was always been a passion of yours since you were little, or is something that it grow while you were growing as well? How was your approach with uh, with this form of art? If you can share that. Yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> I mean, my earliest memory of taking a photo was probably when I was eight, and and I remember it being um, I was at like a um, like a fun park, like with with animals at Sea World, and I remember a whale jumping out of the water and taking this photo with this film camera, but didn't have any control over it. And I just had this imagination of like what the image would look like, 
but I think it probably turned out to be a bit blurry. Um, and then fast forward, I I took photography at high school. So um, in my last two years of high school, photography ended up being my my favorite subject. It was just something that I was curious about and then just ended up spending lots of time on it. And um, and I guess that was and, and that was all all just shooting on film. So I would um, most of it was um, shooting on black and white film and we would develop the film, we would develop the photos. And I found a sense of peacefulness in the dark room. You couldn't you couldn't speed things up. Things just took the time that they took to develop, to to process, to dry. Um, and and I quite liked that. It was it was quite cathartic, quite relaxing. Um, then then I, I I studied photography at at university. Um, but I never really thought of myself as becoming a photographer. At that stage, I had lots of lots of different interests, and um, and I did a year of majoring in sculpture at art school. Um, but while I was doing sculpture, that also kind of connected me to photography a little bit because sculpture is about a object within space, and you can look at that object from different perspectives. And then I think through photography that kind of gave me like a a way of um of looking um and then i ended up um changing from sculpture and went back to photography and decided to just immerse myself in photography um i did have a break of two years uh, doing landscaping gardening and landscaping which was actually quite a nice uh change from being in the classroom at the same time it was it made me realize the importance of or the the benefit of being in nature um being around plants and trees and that sort of thing um but yeah when i when i went back then i decided that photography was going to be my focus um and at that point i realized it was still i was still mainly shooting film um there was a little bit of digital uh, photography around but it was still quite early early days with that um and I really like the more that I dived into the photography the more I realized that I didn't know I wanted to learn um and I think for me one of the things that was quite important was um I guess that I guess from studying fine arts for a couple of years it made me realize that Fine art is about a concept, but for me, photography, it's important to know the, the technicality to be able to, um, I guess, create that concept. If you don't understand the lighting or the, the technical elements of photography, then it's hard to execute. So, so I guess my path then kind of went on to realising that I needed to learn as much as possible about the, the technical elements of photography. Um, so then I would then be able to create what was in my mind. Um, yeah, so uh, shall I keep on going? You can keep on going as long as you want. Uh, yeah, just make sure that you f you're sure that you finish. I don't want to interrupt you if you yeah. are flowing mm -hmm. with your words. I was so... Uh... Uh, drawn into your into your words so I'm just checking if if this was complete or if there is anything else you you wish to share before I'm um checking in again with you <laughs> yeah sure um I mean I think one, once I realized that um that I was kind of once I once I had this passion and this determination um then I think my interest grew because then I, once I was able to actually create images um, I mean, I some of the photographers that I studied were these, you know, different like masters like Ansel Adams who would be able to create something beautiful from something really sim simple like a capsicum just through lighting. And so I think the the more that I learned um, to me made it seem made the photography seem more exciting um, because then I could then start to become more creative. Um, I could 
I could try things and understand what might work, what might not work. Um, and and then after that, for a few years, I ended up working um, initially in a portrait studio, um, doing the post-production on portraits. So that gave me a little bit of a learning around, um, I guess, just kind of the business of photography, really. Um, and, you know, you, you have times that are busy, times that are not busy. It has fluctuations, ups and downs. And then I... Um, I went along and started assisting different photographers as a photo assistant and lighting assistant. And I guess like over the over the years, I've probably assisted maybe up to about 80 or 90 different photographers, um, some in New Zealand, some in Singapore, um, some international photographers, and um, just slowly kind of learning how different photographers, um, you know, what, what, tools that they use to create an image so um and then there was a I guess a point where I realized that I'd learned I'd learned enough that I needed to learn um before I could actually I felt like there was a certain point where now it was up to me to actually create images myself um and then put my own perspective on it and my own direction on it and yeah Oh, Aaron, thank you so much for your sharing. I realized just now that's the beauty to me of this podcast, that there are so many things that I don't know about the person. And this is actually the place for me to to discover uh, deeper someone. And I really enjoy um, your sharing, especially initially about your experience in in your fine art school, which it kind of remind me my experience as well. I also, uh, in my high school, um, at two years where I needed to decide what to do. And so in those two years, I was exploring everything, sculpture, sculpture, photography, graphic designer, and architecture. And I remember in particular photography, exactly the same experience that you were sharing about how different it is from nowadays with the digital world where you need to trust your intuition. What are you going to take um, once you click the button to take a shot, what, what's going to happen after and all the process in between to develop uh, a photograph, um, an actual photo from from a film, how you call it in, in English, film. Yeah. And um, I wonder if it's something that now because of the fast speed of photography, especially through social media, if you notice that also your connection with, with that aspect of pace and curiosity of what was coming uh, through the film is, is cha it, it change and makes you feel that you are uh, a faster producer or you still keep a certain way that you can can connect even through the digital world in the same way that was before with the analogic is that the word analogic uh, analog yeah analog <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you <laughs> Um, like I, I definitely do feel that, um, I mean, I think it's quite easy for, with shooting digital, that there's a, I feel like sometimes it seems like we can just shoot as much as we want. And what I think like a couple of key things that I always, like in my process of doing photography, um, you know, one of the things that one of my lecturers taught me was that when you're when you're creating a photo, you have the ability to choose whatever it is that is going to be in that photo and whatever is not going to be in that photo. So if there's something that doesn't add to the photo, then it's up to you to remove it. Um, you know, maybe just by changing your your angle or your perspective or zooming in or zooming out. Um, and the other thing is that um, even though you can take a lot of photos with digital, the thing that I guess I learned when I was taking photos with film was that, and particularly the cameras that I was using at the time where I might only have 10 or 12 images per roll of film. Um, and so what it, meant, what it kind of taught me was that it's really important to like look at what you're photographing. Um, you know, is this the right... Um, composition 
and then are all your settings correct? So before you kind of bring your camera up to your eye, like sometimes I would actually just double check what all my settings were on my camera, um, like the, the, you know, the, the ISO or the shutter speed or the aperture. Um, because even though you, you, you can take as many photos as you want, I feel that sometimes life only has what like one moment. Like for example, this moment on the podcast, it's a series of lots of one moments. And even though we can repeat something, we can't go back like the, um, you know, for example, if I, if I took a photo of someone um, and then I showed them the photo, then next time I take a photo, they will have changed. Their body language will have changed their, I don't know, maybe their expression. And so I, I, I also like to think of, even though I have the opportunity to take many photos with digital, Sometimes I might only take one or two because I know what it is in my head that I'm wanting to try and capture, create. And and once it's once it's once it's done, then I feel like it's done. And and um so I guess it's it's probably a lot of the time it's on the one hand, it's taught me to really think about what I'm creating. But I don't necessarily think it means that you can, like, you can almost be faster in, in capturing a photo because, um, because you're you're thinking about it before you take the photo as opposed to thinking about it after you've taken the photo. So, um, so I think that was probably one of the things that I, I try and I try and hold on to when I'm taking photos is just that. Um, I guess like the, the planning, the preparation, um, because I mean, for example, light is not is not constant. You know, like when we're when we're working with daylight with the sun, it's always moving, and in the middle of the day, it doesn't really seem like it's changed much. Um, but when you start to get to the last fifteen minutes of the sun before it goes down, or after the sun has gone down, then you really notice how everything is changing actually quite quickly. So. Um, so I think again, it's it's that process of wanting to make sure that when I press the button, it's almost like I've pre-visualized that everything in that in that frame um, has the most opportunity to come out how I want it to come out. Wow! Thank you. I really like the reminder that every moment is just a moment, and with picture is exactly that capturing the essence of a moment. So I wonder if in your experience with different subject, with different landscape, you have um, a particular, um, yeah, I would say subject, even if it's not necessarily a person, something that you truly, truly enjoy to take picture of. What would be, you can mention even more than one, of course, but what would be your, um, your absolute favorite um, things to take picture of if there could be one, or more <laughs> um i mean i think what like one of the things that i've really enjoyed um having the opportunity to to take photos of is, is people and um you know capturing portraits of people and the process of i think one of the things that's interesting about um photographers that, sh that shoot portraits is that for me, anyway, the um, it's really about the people. It's about the connection between the people. And as much as I'm quite particular about maybe the lighting or the or the location, like the technical elements, um, there's a certain point where I decide that now I have to forget about all those technical elements. It's like I, it's almost like everything's already, and now it's actually about just me and that person. So, um, and yeah, like I, like I think I, I think of myself as a little bit of a watcher as well. Like when I'm when I'm photographing a person, I, um, I might have an idea in my head of what I want things to look like, but I, yeah, I sometimes I direct more, sometimes I direct less. I can sometimes just let things kind of move organically, and I. I like to think of 
um, a portrait as a conversation between two people but without words and so there's this there's this it's, for me it's like a collaboration it's it's um you know for a portrait to be strong the person sitting having their portrait taken um needs to have an element of i guess letting go so sort of allowing you to be able to um, create something special of them um so it is a it, there is an element of trust um and vulnerability um but i think when you can when you can go through those processes yeah i find that can be really quite magic um and yeah like i guess some of my favorite photos are photos that i've been able to have the opportunity to capture of people um and i i think it's also quite special that as a photographer you get led into places where maybe someone else that's not a photographer wouldn't be able to be led into so you can um you know if you're documenting something you can learn about something that you know you, you have this almost like this um a special ticket or passport to get into places um i guess probably another another area which you may have known about is and unexpected, like it's quite unexpected, um, but flowers, um, and, and that's been kind of just something recent. Um, and that was in response to not being able to shoot people during lockdown. And so, so I explored um, shooting tulips uh, last year, uh, well, actually the year before. And again, that was probably quite similar to shooting people. It was really about just being there, um, watching and, and giving space for the flower to be able to present itself um, in its best possible light. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think as, as a result of that project, that's probably given me uh, more connection or more appreciation of that type of subject matter. Mm, thank you for that. And yeah, I, I came to that exhibition of the tulips, which was my first connection with your art. And uh, maybe going back to what we put aside before, the, the different hats, maybe this is the moment to bring it up because the project of the tulips was done by Carl Green, which is one of your alter ego, or I don't know if you prefer another word to describe it. And I'm curious to actually ask you what makes you um, create this other uh, personality or this other artist to, to share about that. Um, if there is something that you wish to share about that, or we can also bring it back to, to photography itself without the two distinct um, people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, it's something that I was curious to ask you. Yeah, I mean, I think probably um, there's, there's probably like a couple of reasons where, um, I mean, yeah, alter ego or maybe just a pseudonym. I mean, I guess I, I think of it just as, as almost just like another um, another place to be able to share something. So in a way, it's given me freedom to be able to put a lot of energy into a separate project, um, quite different from my other work in a way. Um and and be quite specialist in in that work as well and i guess as a as an artist as a photographer um and even just as a as a person often people like to understand us and so we get put in a box it's it might be you know what do you do or what are you interested in um so we can kind of understand that person but then sometimes if you, um, you know, and, and and it makes sense because people want to, you know, if, if they're wanting to hire a photographer, then it might make sense to hire a photographer based on their work or their aesthetic, their style, um, or same with an artist, you know, you, you, you might have a certain style. Um, but then sometimes I think what happens is that you can then feel a bit um, restricted by that work that you're doing. So it's, You've, you've worked hard to create a style, but then suddenly if you feel interested to change that style or, or try something else, 
then sometimes that can be confusing for people um and it, and it might feel like it doesn't quite fit within in in your work um so i created the pseudonym carl green because well actually um initially the reason that i went carl green was that my middle name is carl and i picked green as a word because um throughout my life people have asked me how to spell my name or how to pronounce my name and so I decided that it'd be it would be quite nice to actually just have a word or a name where uh it's quite easy to pronounce Carl Green it's a, it's it's not too difficult um and it, it also meant that um I guess as a you know as a photographer artist um I have quite high expectations on myself and on my art and so what that means is that sometimes I might have a project or an idea that I'm working on and I decide that it's not good enough to see the light of day. Like it, it might just be on the, on the, in the sketchbook essentially. And, um, and sometimes that that's useful because it's good to edit your work, to know what's strong and what's not strong. Like every time I do a shoot, I need to know what's working, what's not working. So it's important to be, critical of your work um, and, and know where it fits. But then sometimes I think it can also be um, tricky because that can be restricting as well, because sometimes when something's new and it's not as refined or developed, then it might get you know thrown out because it's not quite polished. So, um, and because I hadn't really shot a lot of still life work, to me, it made sense to actually create a new, essentially a new identity to be able to share this work, create this work, and have the freedom that maybe I didn't it didn't need to be perfect as well. Um, so, so essentially, it was almost like I was giving myself the freedom to do some of the things that I would normally let myself do um, through this other name, because even though it was me. Um, putting it out in, in the world um, it was under a different name and so I could be almost a little bit almost like an actor in a way it's um, you know it's like you have your the, you know what people see in the in the public and then you have your private life and so in a way with the with the work by Carl Green it meant that um, I was really able to explore this this new subject and and initially the only purpose of creating the work was to essentially take photos during lockdown because I couldn't work during lockdown. So, so initially, I wasn't actually intending to have any of this work, any of these flowers um, seen by anyone. And it wasn't until during that process of exploring the flowers, I realized that I was really enjoying this and wanted to develop it further. And then there was a certain point where I decided that actually this is interesting. This is interesting to me. And I think if it's interesting to me, it might be interesting to other people. And so it, it the, the project developed. And as it developed, it to me, it then became more interesting. Um, and then when I had the exhibition, I actually realized that the exhibition, like the the, the body of work was like, my biggest body of work that I created ever. So it went from being um, under a pseudonym because I wasn't sure whether I wanted it under my name and, and what that would say or what that would mean. But I actually feel really happy that I went through that process. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And, and it really just, yeah, kind of, I think, illustrated um i guess just another depth of of my work and and, and what what i'm interested in and and then how that connect with how that can connect with other people so um that's probably gone around in a few circles but yeah essentially the i guess the, the two key things were that i wanted uh, freedom to be able to create work and um and, and it's it's really important for creativity to be able to allow yourself to make mistakes. 
Um, and I think sometimes I wouldn't create work myself because I would already prejudge it before I created it sometimes. So I think sometimes it's important to allow yourself to be able to make something, tell yourself that it can be crap, it can be, you know, you can you can throw it in the bin after you've created it, but the process of creating it then means that you're actually um, exercising that creative muscle, whether it's good or not. It's it's sometimes it's just about that, um, yeah, exercising that creative muscle, and then in doing so, <clears throat> that's when things can sometimes um, be illuminated. Mm, thank you so much, Aaron, from for that because it's something that I truly resonate with the giving ourselves permission to make mistakes and to play not necessarily with a purpose, but just for the sake of playing with the tools that we have, with the passion that we have, with the possibility also to explore creativity itself, not necessarily with a final purpose, but just to returning to what you were sharing earlier, to enjoy the moment. And that's what I experienced while I was watching the exhibition. For people, flower might just be flower, but even because you decided to give names to them, they kind of bring out their own personality. And what was beautiful, I think, that I spent over two hours just looking at them and creating story in my mind uh, with something that, as now I know more about it, was not even meant to be seen by anyone. And I'm glad that I had that possibility because it, it truly showed me, even now that you're sharing, how we can be creative, but if we take aside that expectation that sometimes we put on ourselves, something has even more uh, such a big impact and a big powerful meaning. And in this case, I'm, I'm glad that I was part of uh, the witnessing of, of this process. And I remember two in particular that they were my favorite. I did, don't remember the name, but they were the two that um, never, it made me feel tired of watching them. I could have stayed there forever. And that's the beauty that I that I find sometime in witnessing or observing something that is just a pure connection with life itself. Even if some people might not consider flower as life, I consider them as such. And um, as the comparison that you did initially with people, uh, subject as your portrait and flowers as subject of your portrait, to me, there was no difference. I could still clearly being connecting with a flower and imagining the, the, the life and the story of the flower. And knowing now that there was a micro chance for us not even to be able to witness that. So thank you for pushing it through and allow it to all those beautiful portraits to come and, and be seen by, by us as well. I really enjoyed this. Uh, this um, sharing that you just did about that. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, I, I love that. <clears throat> and um, I have so many other questions for you. Uh, one that is still related with the hat. And I don't know if it's still something that you are exploring or not, but I remember that um, I witnessed you also as metronomic, which kind of brings us back to one of your interests related with music. And uh, to me, it's still about art. It's still about something that we can connect to, different form of art. And that's why also I like the word art, because it's not necessarily um, relates to the fine arts, but can be explored also in different realms. So... I wonder how that connection started for you, like the connection with the music, if you wish to share that, and the possibility after that to share your own music um, as a as a performer on that on that aspect through through being the I don't I don't have the keyword to to say the director of our dance step, let's say yeah yeah. Um... Well, I guess music's always been around me. Um, like I, I grew up with um, my mum playing piano. So there was a piano at home. Um, and so I think, my, you know, like when I was a few years old, I had to um, 
practice doing the scales and I think I would like my mum would balance like a coin on my hand and if I could do a scale without the coin falling then I would keep the coin <laughs> so um I like I but I, I didn't I didn't pursue music um through school but I always appreciated and uh enjoyed exploring music and and so when I had the opportunity like when I was um when I was studying um in Wellington I'd quite often go to different gigs and just enjoy dancing and and that was just like a release for me um and I guess kind of back then um probably a lot of the a lot of the DJs were were playing on on vinyl um on records and and at the time I just enjoyed I enjoyed being on the other side of the um of, of the music in terms of just being on the dance floor and and then it was really only like fairly recently um maybe probably about five years ago um you know, after going to you know lots of different gigs and festivals, I decided that perhaps I could share some music. Um, there was there was once that um, someone had asked if I wanted to play at a festival, and I said I can't like I can't, I can't actually DJ. I don't actually know how to DJ, but but someone had told them, a friend of mine that um, had told them that I had good taste in music. So. Um, <laughs> Well, that well, they they like my music. So anyway, so I thought, well, maybe it's it's time to learn how to how to DJ, how to you know create some music, put some music together, and um, but I guess coming from a creative place, I didn't have any specific expectations on how I needed to do it. For me, it was really I wanted to make sure that it was going to be enjoyable. Um, it was going to be fun. And I would give myself room to play and um, and explore, and so so because of that, then um, I kind of did things my way. So um, yeah, so I I, I borrowed a friend's uh, DJ controller and and started exploring, you know, like learned the basics of that, but then decided that I. Um, I, I, I wanted to be able to just kind of create different sounds. Um, and so so now how I often um, play is at the moment, um, not very often, like I haven't actually, like I haven't spent a lot of time with music the last few years because um, I guess the, the lockdowns really, um, that they're a little bit kind of destabilizing in terms of my work. So I ended up, putting a little bit less time into my music and a bit more time into my um, photography, which is why Carl Green was able to have an exhibition. Um, I guess you only have limited time and limited limited spare time. And, um, and if you're going to put 100% of your energy into something, then that means you have to sacrifice a social life or you have to sacrifice other other hobbies at that time. But I knew that music would always come back when when I felt like it, it was reading so um yeah so I guess with that like often when I'm when I'm playing music or, or mixing music together in the past I've often thought of the music in terms of could I dance to this and um and you know I, I like I like to I like to be able to have a dance floor um like to be on a dance floor and for me I enjoy I enjoy a musical journey like almost if that journey can begin and it doesn't need to stop like it's like during that set if it can just be continuous I really enjoy that that process so um so that was one of the things that I wanted to try and explore myself was how to create almost like a continuous journey and so as a result I end up um sometimes chopping up um, musical tracks a little bit and layering them into different songs. So, so it might mean that then there's an element of almost like a semi-live performance because I might be playing something that might be um, 
three different loops of three different songs um, to create, a, a, I guess, like a blend together. And um, and sometimes I'll still play play tracks as well, but it's, I guess it gives me the, I feel like I, I like to give myself the freedom to be able to, to do that. Um, and I guess also I don't have a certain specific style because sometimes when I've um, the set time that I've been given to play at, at a different festival um, might dictate that that's you know like I don't want to be listening to dance music at say 7 a.m on a Sunday morning I want to listen to something that's soothing and relaxing and um, so it's also given me the um, the opportunity to be able to explore different types of sounds because um, yeah I often when I'm playing I'm thinking like what would I want to listen to if I was you know at that dance floor at that time like what kind of mood would I be in so um um and it's yeah it's it's like it's been a really like I find it a really nice uh outlet as well like it's um like I don't DJ out a lot um I guess like sometimes I like to make sure that I have something that I want to share before um before doing it a DJ set somewhere so um so these days they've been a little bit rare but um yeah but I there's there's, there's a few that I have on um SoundCloud um under Metronomics so if, if people are interested they can um they can go there and um yeah I think one set was called XX and that was a a, a gig where during lockdown we were allowed to go to the bar, but we weren't allowed to dance. So I specifically made a set that was not going to make you dance. <laughs> and um, and then there was another set that, that's on there that was um, 7 a.m. Sunday morning at a festival. So again, it was something that I wanted to be almost like a soothing way to wake up, or if you had been up all night, then a soothing way to, to exist. Wow, thank you for that. Definitely we can add the, the link of Metronomic from some cloud as well as all the other link of your social media between um, Aaron profile and also Carl Green profile so that everything will be available for everyone to explore you in whatever uh, aspect they wish to. But I'm really curious, especially for the the soundtrack of the, the music that doesn't make you dance. That's the one that I'm most interested to. Um, but I really like also your way of exploring yourself through what you like. Um, and so taking some of your time to explore how how to learn about music, how to, to learn how about being on the other side of a dance floor, which is something that many of us in different aspects um, have always the wishes and desire to do something, but then we never take that time off. Uh, and you did in this case, even if you decide not to pursue it as your main path, it's still part of uh, your bucket of knowledge. And I really like the, uh, at least for one time I was there to, maybe, I, I, I'm not sure if it was your first one as metronomic, but I definitely remember the, um, I dance, I dance with your music. And, and that is something that it's always, um, giving me a better connection with someone and I'm, I'm glad that today uh, despite the um, art exhibition despite the music and then step today was the the day for us to connect verbally which is still a nice way to to be connected to not our main one but today was our day for that so just before we close I have two final questions one is related with what should we expect this year? Is there is anything coming up um, for you in terms of art, whatever aspect of it, um, in a sense of either art exhibition or potential gig where you where we can come and dance, something that we can look up for? I'm not sure if that's the right way to say, look up for. Uh, look, look out for, maybe. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I guess, um, I mean, 
essentially last year was my year to um to just immerse myself and explore Carl Green and and that art. Um and and I guess like once I once I had the exhibition in November, um I was then thinking about well I guess people were asking me, you know, what's next? Um what what can we look out for? And um and at that time I had taken like quite a bit of time off you know creating portraits of people because again you can't do everything um at once so so recently I've been enjoying getting back into my photography and um and creating some portraits of people so I've been um and I guess probably because I'm interested in music then um that also means that there ends up being some portraits of musicians um so um yeah so recently i've kind of taken some um dj profile portraits uh and also i've got some some more coming up um and so that that's an area that i want to explore more of so i guess if there are people out there that are that are wanting some um you know like a profile of themselves then um you know to get in touch in terms of my art like the, the um well i guess that so so there's art under Carl Green, and then there's, there's also art under Aaron Burgess. Um, and the Aaron Burgess, like I've only had one solo exhibition that was in 2018, and, and that was Portraits of People. That was called Heat Tonic. Um, I guess at the moment I've been wanting to just give myself a little bit of um, space to explore some projects that I've started. So... I don't have any um, specific dates um, for an ex like for an upcoming exhibition, but I will be wanting to um, to share some more like some more work from Carl Green um, and also Aaron Burgess. Um, and in terms of music metronomic, um, I definitely think that there will be I'll, I'll do some more gigs this year because um, I, I did one uh, I think it was. Maybe it was about a week and a half ago, um, and and I played a set where the first half was um, music to a yoga class. So, um, yeah, like I, I think at the moment, um, I'm excited to. I think the 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 Carl Green has kind of given me a new sense of uh, inspiration and and passion in terms of creating, um, and freedoms of of creating. So. Um, so I feel like I'm I'm in that kind of phase of creating as opposed to um, having something ready to to show, but um, yeah, one, like once once things are ready, then they'll be shared, and and I'll I'll try and share a little bit more on my um, on my channels as well because sometimes I can like I was I was going through some photos today and I was just thinking there's so many that I haven't <laughs> that people haven't seen, so um, yeah. Yeah, and I hope that this podcast will give you the motivation so that listener can um, start uh, following you on all the all the um, uh, link that they will be below this episode in the description of the episode, so that when something will actually come up, more people will come and join and see you face to face as well as I had the possibility to do, and I'm really looking forward also for a time to come to connect again with you. Yeah. Um, I know that there is my last question, which uh, some people are a little bit afraid of the last question, but I hope it won't be your case. <laughs> I hope that with all the creativity that we've been sharing today, you'll be, you'll be quite inspired. And my last question comes actually from our practice of art yoga. It's inspired by the practice of art yoga, which um, we usually use the the closing of this, the class to connect with three grateful things of our day, but transform them on this different setting as um, a possibility for me to ask you if you could share three empowering messages that you would like to share with our audience, considering also the possibility of the sharing of this message to be also a reminder for yourself and including me in the audience as well. Not in a sense that you need to do one for you, one for me, and one for the audience. Can be 
all a mix together of whatever empowering mes messages you wish to share with us today. No matter um, also how small or big they are, this is the key point. <laughs> Not yeah. the people. <laughs> um, I think like like what uh, so three messages. Um, well, well, one thing in particular that I've been interested to uh, to explore myself is um, learning how to let go. So the process of of letting go of things. Um, because I guess as a as a perfectionist, it can get you can get quite attached to things. You can get attached to mistakes or things not being good enough or um, you know the, the the barrier to entry of something. And so what I realized that um, was that the only way that I could actually exhibit with Carl Green was by letting go of my perfectionism, letting go of needing everything to be perfect before saying yes to something. And um, and being able to move through that process um, with as much ease as possible, knowing that um, that what's, you know, that the, the importance of what you're sharing might be um, more important than maybe every element of it being perfect. So yeah, so that I think that's um I mean for example the exhibition that I had tulip portraits. Um yeah as I mentioned that was something that I didn't actually necessarily realize that there was a project um there. Um and that and I was exploring those images as a result of having to um, cancel an exhibition that was meant to be an art week um, but had to be cancelled because we were still in lockdown so having spent 30 days photographing tulips for an exhibition which I had to cancel um, you know took quite a bit of time and energy uh, you know to to be able to let go of that because that, that's a that's a lot of passion a lot of energy a lot of hard work that suddenly I felt like an anticlimax and it wasn't until um you know after a couple of weeks of you know allowing myself to have some kind of time to accept that I was cancelling that exhibition and I looked through those images again to then find that there was actually another whole body of work that I hadn't realized was in there um you know that that was you know that was quite beneficial so yeah so letting letting go is one that's important um Probably another message would be the importance of a healthy mind. Um, again, I think um, it's really important, you know, as a as a freelance um, artist, photographer, you know, life can be up and down. It can be up and down for everyone, and um, and sometimes you know you have all these different things, all these different pressures that can happen, and uh, they can be destabilizing. They can be, you know, quite challenging to overcome. And as a result, I've realized that, um, well, also like when I was, there was one point when I was younger that I had a little bit of depression and that made me realize that depression is like a chemical imbalance. And so for me, it's important to do things in my life that um, give me the best opportunity to keep my head above water because sometimes you don't know when it's going to rain or flood. So, um, but when it does, you you want to be in the best possible position mentally to be able to um, to survive that, um, to you know survive the things that aren't quite working out. So, um, so I guess I I try and practice um, you know things like even just small things like meditation or yoga, um, doing exercise, um, and and even even things like dancing. For me, dancing is quite a uh, cathartic. It gives me a lot of lot of pleasure. So um, so I think it's important to to do little things in your life that just give you um, yeah, you know, like I guess the, the best means of maybe not getting depressed um 
yeah, and and being resilient when things don't quite work. Um, and probably finally, um, so yes, yeah, so I suppose the second one is probably about health and mental health. Um, and then the last one would be probably um, action. Um, it's it's pretty easy. Like time can go quite quickly, and it's quite easy to say, oh, "I'll I'll do this in the future," um, or you know, I don't have time to do this right now. But what I've realized is that um, if it's if it's important, then you can make time, and it's it might mean that something else needs to be sacrificed. But um, I mean the like the value that I got from creating the the project Tulip Portraits was was really was really big for me because it wasn't just it wasn't just an ego thing for me feeling great I've I've done this exhibition it was an element that um, there was a lot of people that went there that because for me the the exhibition was. A body of work that had helped me get through lockdown and had been quite cathartic and been quite meditative. And when um when other people saw the work, they also felt a sense of calmness, a lot of them said, and and peacefulness. And so for me that's um you know that, that's that's quite important because I guess as a photographer, um I feel that my role is to create images to help other people or help communicate things for people, help help them see things in a different light or a different perspective. So, um, but if you if you don't if you don't give yourself an action, then it won't happen. So, I think it's important to um, yeah to 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 give yourself these these small goals. And um and work towards the goals because it's always it can be daunting um it can be kind of challenging when it seems like quite a big goal but um but again if you practice you know you know things for your mental health to you know to keep you feeling good if you practice things um, around letting go then it just means that whatever is happening with your with your action plan um. It, you know, it might take a little bit longer. You might have to go a different direction. You might have to hit pause for a moment. But so long as you're still um, giving yourself energy for that journey, for you know, for for making things happen, then I find for me, once once things start to happen a bit more, then I get a natural energy. So when I when I see a project working, I can I can work on that project for more hours. It's yeah, I guess it's um, almost like a sense of positive energy. I feel like negative energy can can make you tired, and when things aren't quite working, I feel like sometimes you can have this negative energy and you can you can feel frustrated and tired. But then when you have positive energy, suddenly you can be more awake and more more excited. Um, you can do more. So, um, and that only really kind of comes from um you know allowing yourself to to action these small tasks to be able to then grow into something bigger thank you so much Aaron. this is my favorite part of the podcast because all the sharing i embrace them for myself firstly and i also hope that they could be quite inspirational for whoever is listening in this moment there are to me, sometimes they could be very simple things, yet it's uh, nice to hear them as someone is like mirroring to us. And in this case, all the sharing that you, you did, they are very valuable for me and to remind myself how to take care of myself, how to make space for the things that I love and how to let go of the things that I'm getting too much attached to. So thank you for all your beautiful sharing in regard uh, the empowering messages. So we yeah. arrive at the end of our podcast, but from like truly all my heart, I wish to thank you for your time and for this beautiful knowledge that you share with us 
in terms of connecting with ourselves and arts. And I really like that you expand it also through not just like the photography aspect, but also the music aspect. So really thank you for, for your sharing, for your wise word and for your inspiration in this moment. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And for everybody else who is listening, I hope that you will um, find this inspirational for you too. And remember that below this uh, episode, there will be all the link to being connected with Aaron, whatever way you wish to be connected with him too. And, um, and I hope you're going to have a really lovely day. Bye. Bye-bye. Grazie per averci fatto compagnia. We hope you enjoyed your time with us. If you wish to stay updated and connected, visit us on our social media channels and our website www.artyoga.co Ci sentiamo presto! Ciao!